Welcome to Field to Feast, where we profile Louisiana and its local ingredients. Today, Tori and I are about to talk tuna. Field to Feast with Jennifer Finley is brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board. Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat. And by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council. Beef, it's what's for dinner. And by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board. Think rice. I actually, on the, on the way here, I googled a tuna joke. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Tuna. Who? You can tune a piano, but you can't tune a fish. <laughs> Jensen Tuna today, and we're going to learn all about grading tuna. What do you know about where we're heading in? Well, Danny and David, they're fantastic gentlemen, and I'll tell you, we get um, primarily all of our tuna right from the docks uh, here in South Louisiana. So these guys know more about tuna and how they grade them and how to pick out the specific things that as a chef that I need to run a great restaurant like Commander's Palace. So I'm thrilled to be able to walk in, say hello to the friends, and uh, get more information. Oh my goodness, this is so exciting! So all of this is fresh Gulf tuna? Yes, it is. All landed right here in the Gulf of Mexico. It's all, like I said, yellowfin tuna. And what you're looking at probably ranges in size. This, this comes in, when we get it from the boats, it's all headed and gutted. All of these range probably, I would say, 75 to maybe 90 pounds. This is yellowfin tuna that we have in today. And we're grading the fish based on uh, freshness, color, uh, the clarity of the meat, the firmness of the texture, and things like that. And we're classifying the fish as a number one or number two plus, or number two or number three. All right, so he's looking at the tail cut, and he's looking at a couple of factors in here. One, the bloodline, okay? So we want a red bloodline like that. If the bloodline's dark or brown, we know that fish doesn't have much of a leg on it, okay? That fish is a little bit dark in the middle, but it's a very good fish and because of the texture it's got. And look at the body. This fish here, when he cores it, it's going to bloom up. Yep. See, that, this type of fish he, he, he can deal with, OK? Uh, deal see, with? You can make well, this yeah. amazing. <laughs> he, can, he can do amazing things with it. I think, I think the fascinating thing for me as a professional chef doing what we do is the trust and respect that we have in guys like my friend David to understand, hey, look, this is the this is, the, this is what we want and this is what we're gonna get. Because these fish are not inexpensive. But I know if I put my trust in him and say, look, I've got, I've got hundreds of people coming in for dinner tonight. I need this one particular cup. I know it's gonna be the freshest one possible. This fish right here came up live. Okay, you see his, uh, the meat coming out right here on the head? Yes. When they, if, if this is flat, all the way sucked in, it's a dead fish. Okay. That's how we can tell whether we got a dead fish or a live fish. Most of your number ones, I would say 85% of them are, are going to be live fish. Yeah. The, your quality control is amazing. Yeah. I got in this industry when these fish were worth 50 cents. Okay. How much are they worth now? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, the price structure in these fish is 80% higher than it was 30 plus Why? years ago. Demand. Uh, creative markets. People like Chef that created the market for the fish. And uh, Flavor, therefore, taste. I mean, is that? Oh yeah. What I mean, it's a, the health benefits of eating this is 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 That's off the charts. Yep. And you know, I mean, you can't get any more healthier than eating tuna fish. You know, tuna fish and salmon, really. You know, and uh, it's two of the most beneficial, healthy fish you can eat, especially yellowfin. Tuna. Well, it's. I mean, this is such a pr super precise industry. Yeah. Very exciting to know that it's so local, yeah. so Louisiana, yeah. fresh yeah. ingredients. Yeah. And we're going to take some of this tuna back to Tori's house where he's going to make something for us. What are you going to make today? Well, let's do some kind of seared tuna, but let's do something with some like wasabi caviar on top of it, a couple of sauces. Let's right. just have fun with it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> that sounds great. How can yeah. you not have fun with a product <laughs> yeah. this local and this delicious? <laughs> We are back in the kitchen with Chef Tori McPhail from Commander's Palace, and today we're gonna to be making some tuna. So yep. what are we gonna be doing, Chef? So we've got a tuna dish. We've never done this before. 
right? But I love Louisiana food, but I also love Mexican food. So I we're do gonna take, too. We're going to take Louisiana ingredients or Louisiana flavors. We're going to travel to Mexico wow. and enjoy ourselves and do something that we've never done. So we're going to cut this in half. It might be counterintuitive. We're actually going to cut it this way. Okay. So the piece is smaller. So on the plate, you don't want this big floppy thing in the middle of the plate. You want it to be nice, looking good. Slice it like it would be in a nice sushi restaurant. So instead of just Creole seasoning, we're actually going to use taco spice. Oh! So let's set this to the side. Okay. And then we're going to have some fun. Okay. okay Woo! We'll do all up in here. Okay. Up in here, yeah. up in here. Oh, wait, that's a song, isn't it? Okay. Beautiful. So we want to take the seeds out. So typical chili rellenos, you just want to open it up and you have one slip to the top of it. Because we're not going to fry ours, and it's going to be healthy, but it's going to take ours, we're going to cut it just right in half. We're going to take these and we're going to season these with just a little bit of salt. Okay. Okay, so we're just going to cut this into quarters like this. Okay. And it's okay if some of the, the dark, uh, the charred top is on. I'm just going to take our knife and we're just going to gently, gently open it up until so you get what's called a tomato lapel. Just a barely little bit of olive oil. Garlic goes in. Okay, so the green onion bottoms are going to go in. Okay. We're going to add a little bit of shallots just so we have some better foundation of flavor that goes into our pan. That zero waste thing. Zero which waste. Which is so awesome. And then instead of green bell peppers, so now we're going to add our jalapenos. Okay. So we're just going to give this a little shake. Perfect. We're going to put it in here. And once we're going to add all of our rice, you're not going to see the little tiny tomato seeds anyway. Okay. And this is all going to stew down, so you can't really see the chop anyhow. So this is only going to take a minute. You can add a little salt. bit of salt. Okay. Uh, we're just going to add some oh. some, uh, oh, okay. some rice first. So just like pull, oh. pull some out of there. Sorry. Yeah. Well, that looks like it's pretty well incorporated, wouldn't you say? I think it looks delicious already. It looks yeah. like a Mexican dish. So time to taste. Taste as you go. Because mm. you can always add your flavor. That's really good. The pan is nice and hot. And the important thing here is we're just going to take that vegetable oil, or the olive oil in this case, we're just going to shake it around the pan. Yes. And if you want to use your tongs, yes. gently set the tuna in. Just okay. make sure not to splash anything. But the yes. pan is ripping hot right now. Okay. Because we're going to sear it on all sides, but we do not want to overcook this. That's the important thing. So what's the heat? Hot. So the thing that makes this searing tuna a little different than searing a steak is we've always been taught when we're searing a steak, you want to pull the steak out maybe 40 minutes ahead of time, keep it in saran wrap to keep it clean, but you want to temper the steak. Let the steak come, kind of come up to room temperature. The opposite with tuna. Okay, so we're going to, yep, yeah, perfect. So we're going to sear our tuna, but you want to make sure it's ice cold. So the idea with this, we'll turn off this flame. The idea here is when the tuna is ice cold, um, we have a larger window of opportunity to sear it. So at this point, we're going to add some cilantro sauce to the top. Of it. <gasps> yes. Yeah. Now, this is another one of your fantastic mm -hmm. cilantro, lime, sea salt sauces. Pour that on top of our tuna. Okay. Oh my goodness, look at this. <gasps> yeah. Now we're just going to kind of work it around, and so the marination kind of starts at this point. Okay. We're going to take our gorgeous tuna, gently saw back and forth, and what you're left with is gorgeous pieces of tuna. Oh my goodness. That looks great. I mean, that could not be more spectacular. Oh my goodness. Okay, so where's the bubbly? Here's the dish. Check it out. To good food, great friends, and Louisiana ingredients. Indeed. Cheers to that. Might be my favorite dish we've ever made together. Beautiful. Truly. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for Cheers, friend. All right, cheers. Field to Feast with Jennifer Finley was brought to you by the Louisiana Crawfish Promotion and Research Board, Louisiana Crawfish, ask before you eat, and by the Louisiana Beef Industry Council, beef, it's what's for dinner, and by the Louisiana Rice Promotion Board, think rice.